You know, if your hearing loss is this bad, you should probably throw your hearing aids in the trash. Hearing aids are the best and only treatment option for the vast majority of hearing losses. In fact, over 90% of hearing losses that are caused by things like age, genetics, noise exposure, and chemical exposure require the use of hearing aids. However, hearing aids are not effective for all types of hearing losses, and in some cases you might need a bone anchored hearing aid or even a cochlear implant instead. Now if you do not know what a cochlear implant is, I will link this video down in the description for you to check out so you can learn more about them. But in this video, I want to talk about what a hearing care professional is looking for when considering whether or not to refer you out for a cochlear implant evaluation instead of just fitting you with another set of hearing aids that aren't going to work. But before I do, if you could do me a huge favor and click the like button, I really appreciate it because it gets these videos in front of a bigger audience. And while you're at it, if you have not yet hit that subscribe button with notification bell, go ahead and do that as well because that ensures that you never miss one of my newly released videos and I release multiple new videos every single week. That being said, I really appreciate it. Now let me give you an understanding of how the human ear works. To help do that, I'm going to be using my 3D ear model. Now, sound is a vibration. When that vibration enters the ear, it travels down the ear canal to the eardrum. The eardrum takes that vibration and sends it through the three middle ear bones called ossicles and into the cochlea, which is your hearing organ. The cochlea is this little coil right here and it looks a little bit like a snail. Now inside of that coil, you have a bunch of fluid and you have a membrane. When that vibration of sound enters in, it makes the membrane move. But you also have microscopic little hair cells all along that membrane called outer hair cells that take that vibration of sound and enhance it to make that membrane move even more. Now if this membrane moves enough, it triggers an inner row of hair cells that will take that vibration and send it up the auditory nerve to the brain so you can hear. Hearing aids do a really good job of replacing the function of these outer hair cells to enhance the vibration of sound to create enough movement in the basilar membrane. This is as long as those hearing aids are fit and programmed properly. However, hearing aids are notoriously bad at replacing the function of the inner hair cells which control the amount of clarity that you get from that sound. When these inner hair cells deteriorate past a certain point, you need to consider cochlear implants instead of hearing aids if you want to restore clarity to your hearing. But how do you know if your hearing loss is caused by damage to the inner hair cells or the outer hair cells? Well, to find that out, we have to have a good understanding of your word recognition score percentages that you can find on your hearing test. Your word recognition scores are the percentages of single syllable words that you repeat back correctly to your tester in quiet when those words have been appropriately amplified. If these word recognition score percentages are high, then your inner hair cells are largely intact and hearing aids will be an appropriate treatment option for you. However, if these percentages are low, then your inner hair cells have deteriorated to the point where hearing aids will no longer be as effective. As long as you have measurable thresholds on your audiogram indicated by the X's and the O's, and hearing aids that are capable of amplifying sound loud enough to hit your prescriptive targets. So at what point should your hearing care professional refer you for an evaluation to determine if a cochlear implant is more appropriate than a hearing aid? Well that's where the 60-60 guideline for cochlear implant referral comes into play. In a 2020 paper published in Otology and Neurootology, the researchers propose an extremely easy way to identify if you should be referred to a cochlear implant center for a cochlear implant candidacy evaluation. The whole premise of this guideline is that if your better hearing ear has a pure tone average of 60 dB HL or higher, and that same ear has a word recognition score of 60% and below, then you should be referred to a cochlear implant center for a cochlear implant candidacy evaluation. Now to easily calculate your pure tone average, otherwise known as your PTA, you would take your pure tone air conduction thresholds from your better hearing ear at 500 Hz. 1000 Hertz and 2000 Hertz, add them together and then divide by three. If this number is equal to or greater than 60 dB HL, then you would meet the first half of the guideline. Now, if your word recognition score in that same ear is at 60% or below, then you have technically met the second half of the 60-60 referral criteria, meaning that you could be referred to a cochlear implant center for a cochlear implant candidacy evaluation. In this retrospective review, researchers looked at data from 529 patients who participated in cochlear implant candidacy evaluations to see how many of them met the 60-60 referral criteria and ended up becoming a traditional candidate for 
cochlear implants. When it was all said and done, the results were quite surprising. Candidates who met the 60-60 referral criteria had a 76% chance of becoming a traditional candidate for cochlear implants. However, of these individuals who did not meet the 60-60 criteria, meaning that they actually heard too good to be within this referral criteria, 94% of them did not meet the traditional candidacy requirements for a cochlear implant. This means that the majority of individuals who met this 60-60 criteria ended up becoming traditional candidates for a cochlear implant. On the hearing care professional side, this makes it really easy to know when we should be referring an individual for a cochlear implant evaluation rather than just fitting them with another set of hearing aids. So what does this mean for you? Well, if you happen to meet both of these criteria, it might be worth a conversation with your hearing care professional if you are just not satisfied with your performance with your hearing aids. Keep in mind that this guideline is intended to determine whether or not you should be referred for a cochlear implant evaluation. It does not guarantee that you will become a candidate for a cochlear implant, and it does not mean that you should even get a cochlear implant. That is a discussion that you should be having with your audiologist and your otologist. Also, if you have a case of single-sided deafness, this criteria does not apply, and you may still be able to get a cochlear implant, and again, this is a discussion that you should be having with your doctors. At the end of the day, even if you do meet this criteria, but you're happy with your hearing aid performance, I say go ahead and continue to use your hearing aids unless you feel like you'd rather get a cochlear implant instead. But if you continue to struggle with your hearing aids and you do meet this 60-60 criteria, having a discussion with your doctor about getting a cochlear implant evaluation might be a really good idea.